Hello, I'm Kevin Burton. I'm an adjunct professor at Francis Marion. I teach uh, child development. I just got my master's from there in psychology and I'm currently in the MBA program. What I want to go over is to, I want to help my students do better on their quizzes. I went through and just tried to think of all the things that, that I try to do and that's helped me a lot um, since I've been back in school um, since the age of 40. Um, so you're getting ready for your quiz. First thing is first, like don't clean up your workspace. I can't tell you how many times I'm guilty of cleaning my room, doing all this, preparing to, to study, and then I'm too tired to study. So just put your stuff on top, put a tablecloth on top, and just start. Don't try to get ready to study. Next thing is turn off your email, your cell, cell phones, everything, the computer for that matter, anything that can distract you. I believe it's called freedom as an act that um, you can like set a set minutes and then from that point I mean you cannot turn you cannot get on the internet um, another thing that I would suggest using it's called the um, Pomodoro technique and what it is um, actually for my students I'm gonna have a uh, a link to, to uh, something I found on, on Google Scholar that will uh, help them it's pretty lengthy but just the gist of it is you have 25 minutes that's the goal 25 minutes you study, you do whatever it is, and then you get a five-minute break. Now, if the material's tough and you don't really want to study, you may take 15 minutes and take a five-minute break. Sometimes if you're really on the ball, you may go to 30, 35 minutes, but the point is you don't want to start doing, just because you're in the zone, you don't want to do like an hour at a time. It's nice to take those breaks. So that's something that you, and then also when you're doing that, you would like to, you want to so at the beginning of your 25 minutes, you want to write a goal that you can do in 25 minutes. So say that's read pages uh, 50 to 54 in our textbooks. And then, um, and that, again, that needs to be detailed. Like I said, the page numbers, and then of course you've got the time. Is it attainable? Basically, it, almost like a small, smart goal. And then another thing you want to do is you're, you're trying to study and then you think of something. So you can see here, it's you know I've got stuff for breaks and afterwards so um, you know again instead of going to do something go ahead and write it down I mean if you get thirsty just write grab a drink um, after after your 20 20 25 15 minutes is over um, I use an app called vitamin R it really helps me and it also keeps the log, uh, keeps a log and I can kind of look and, and then after the 25 minutes, what you can do too is you put, you know, was I in the zone, was I highly distracted um, or in between, that type thing. And it's been amazing like how many, how much time you actually do, how you're actually like studying it in, in the zone. It's, uh, I was pretty surprised and almost depressed, but you know, again, it, it's getting better. So anyway, um, so getting back to the quiz. Um, so you're getting ready for your quiz. So something you want to do, you want to know your professor. I mean, you know, where they used to live, their likes, their dislikes, um, just anything they they tend to talk about. That stuff is going to generally going to, you'll see that show up over and over. And just to help my class, you know, I enjoy learning about diversity, addiction, mental disorders, especially when the addiction and mental disorders work together. That that's something I so kind of like I can't help, but if I see that in the book, I'm going to see it, and then like, well, I saw it, and then I'm going to I'd probably tend to ask a quiz question on that. Anything with brain stuff, I like uh, learning about the brain neurotransmitters and brain function, uh, and how the um, like you know, for for, for um, you know addiction, you tend to your brain will actually change as you keep doing something over over and over. Uh, also, I like, I like reading. I like reading books about psychology and find kind of learning like why people do what they do. I enjoy like biases. A guy named Daniel uh, Kahneman is really good. Another guy named David McRae is a little bit easier to read than Kahneman. But um, I also like doing new things that are really challenging. Like right now, I'm picking up the violin again. Um, I guess I've done a couple Ironman triathlons, marathons, just anything that has a you know, challenge. Um, I like things about like nutrition and like genetic gifts that help people excel in their sport. Like for instance, uh, 
you know, cycling. I mean, there's this thing called VO2 max and it's kind of a thing you, you can train, but it's basically you either get it or you don't, um, from birth, um, fast twitch, so t- slow twitch muscles, that type thing. Um, another thing is I don't really like to mess with people, trick people, play jokes on them. I'm just really not into that. So what well, that means, I'm not going to really put like in the last quiz, we had some none of the above, uh, answers and, I just, I'm not going to, I put them, I really, I guess I wasn't really thinking. I just kind of had those on there, but I, I'm not going to do that. I, I just think that's mean. So um, that's something that you, if you see that, none of the above, basically you've, instead of four, four um, things to choose from, you can ver- pretty much count that down to three. And then also too, with all the above, um, that's not an automatic for me. Um, I'll have those every once in a while, but again, don't just automatically put all the above. Um, generally, it's almost like I can't think of another, um, the fourth thing on there, A, B, C, D. It's almost, well, let me just put that up there um, rather than uh, putting it on. Not to say that I won't, but in, and if I do, I'll try to be, hope, I mean, it would be obvious if you did the reading I think, but of course, too, I mean, you can read and, you know, you'll tend to zone out for a paragraph and it goes right by you, too. I I definitely get that. And then you go back after the quiz and realize it's just right there in front of us, in front of you. So, um, so now, you know, kind of, again, just that's just to help you with with my quizzes, I guess. But getting back to preparing for the quiz, you know, um, how how to go through it. So, First thing is to skim and and write down, um, you know, major things you're seeing in the chapter. You're reading through, you see like a figure or something like that, and and um, you're reading like the first sentence of a paragraph. You're seeing like italicized words, um, just things like that, things that jump out to you, or again, think that you think that they may jump out to, to me or or um, another professor, and then. Um, Something that you also, uh, just another thing is the uh, abbreviation. So just another tip is if you're writing down, like for instance, theory is mentioned all the time in this book. So you just may put a big capital T, but at the top of the page in every page, put T for theory. And then if you have, and then you can make a bunch of those, but just make sure you have it on every um, page because like I said, you can use that, you can use the, um, those pages in my quizzes when you're taking the quiz so you can kind of go through and it'll just help you um, to you know, cause you may see T and forget what that's for and then also too, just another tip is just use the front page of your paper so like here um, kind of some notes for chapter one you again just use the front there's nothing on the back if you have something on the back it's like you're looking for it or it gets you, you can't remember um, it's, it's just a it just can get you disorganized and you only have so much time to take the quiz. So, um, but now with, with the skimming part, the first part, part of that's reading the, reading the summary. Okay. Now we've got these really good chapter summaries in the books in our book here. So go to the back and, and again, I would paraphrase every single, um, every single, uh, bullet point on that. And, um, and I, I can just tell you, I'll make sure that at least one question comes directly from that, almost almost word word for word. And then, um, so then, so you, you've done that, and then that that really should take you about an hour. Um, so that's it's not um, again, like I said, it should take you about an hour. So it'd be two two pa, two pomodoros for that. So. Um, so now, now we're reading. So then you're reading your, your chapter, and you're reading basically a, a paragraph at a time. So you'll go through, you read the paragraph, and then you're looking for the bold words. You're looking for the italicized words. Um, you're, uh, you know, again, um, just think about italicized words. Why do you use italicized? To show meaning um, to a word. So if there's something in there, that's if the author's trying to say something professor picks up on that boom there's your there's your uh, quiz question and then also too a lot of times the italics will be kind of a weird word a word from another language uh, something like that that's another thing that professors like to use because it's it's obvious I mean they're not looking to make the quiz extremely hard they just want to make sure that you read and you read thoroughly you just didn't read through it like you're reading a novel I mean you do 
I guess I think I'll repeat here again with my notes, but generally about, you know, about eight pages an hour is about all, you know, I mean, as, as far as I think it's a good amount to read. I mean, anything more is, is great, but, you know, six to eight is fine. It's just going to take you a while to get through this. And just remember, I mean, as far as college, you should know that for every hour you take, like our class is a, is a three-hour class, it should take you nine hours to, you should, you should study nine hours for, for our, for our class. So, um, that's something to think about there. Now, when you're reading a psychology textbook, um, again, just have, being a business major and writing some of my first pages, my papers, I, I made things definitive and kind of, I guess, opinionated because you can do that on business papers. And it kind of been, I don't know, about 16, 15, 17, 18 years since I'd been in college again, too. But, um, Psychology is different. It's it it has to be, you know, proven over and over and over. So, for instance, if uh, when it says something definitive, I mean, as far as I think I've got an example here where um, in our in our book it said something about you know teachers um, are going to you know are going to do this. So um, that. I'm kind of sorry, I kind of got lost. Don't, I wish I could edit this, but anyway, I don't have that software, or I do, but don't know how to use it. But point is, when you um, forgot what I was going to say, can I pause this? Can I start over? I was doing so good for a while. So I guess that would be our Pomodoro break. I don't know how many minutes I've been into this, so um, I apologize. So now we're talking about the definitive thing. So yeah, so in, in our book, it, ta- it says when it is definitive, I mean, that means that this thing, the, what they said has been proven over and over and over and over many times. So, um, and when it is something like that, or it says most, or um, it's comparing others, that's that again, boom, there, there's, there's a test question. Um, so again, look for, look for bullet points as far as, again, that's easy to make a test question from that. And then when you see a citation, like if you look at the middle of page 59, there's, uh, I believe it's, uh, it's got two authors in the year 1999. Generally, like something usually will, is important. That's why they cited it. And then it's, it's, it's saying that this way is, has, um, you know, some, sci- some empirical evidence that it is true. And then also, too, they need to give credit to the person that came up with this because that would be plagiarism. So um, that there. So uh, see what else I missed there. So all right. So now we're we're reading. So like I said, again, reading one one paragraph at a time, just kind of reading it, and then look for the stuff that that I just mentioned. And again, like I said, eight minutes, uh, eight pages an hour is is really good. And then make notes of like the figures and the um, tables that you see, and then find that in the reading, and then know how how all that works. And this, this, I believe, is kind of a tough one. Um, you know, again, it's better for your memory to paraphrase it. So it says one of these sentences, and I'm sorry, I'm not, this book isn't too bad, but some, especially when you're reading peer-reviewed journals, I mean, they write in this way that's beyond me. So, um, and it just sounds so good. It, it sounds a certain way. And, and, and so the point is, if I, you know, go through that difficult sentence and figure out and write it out myself in my own words, I've got a, a great likelihood of remembering that rather than just copying what the, what the journal article said. So with our book, it goes two ways. Professors are going to generally, with quizzes and tests, are gonna, gonna, they're going to take a sentence word for word, and then the word they're looking for, they'll make a blank, boom, there's your answer. Again, they do that because no matter what the question is, if you come up to them and you have a legitimate argument, they can say, well, I mean, it, it is in the book word for word. And again, it just makes it easier now. And then, um, so that's something there. And then, um, so, the, okay, so we got the, the, the paraphrasing. And then, um, but then also too, it's, so again, like I said, if, if you remember the word for word, it's easier to recognize but then the paraphrase is going to help you memorize it. So you may just have to find out what's what's better for you. So um, I hope this helps with your quizzes. Um, something I was thinking about doing too, I know that um, maybe I'll just kind of read 
th- this I was trying to make this short. I don't know how short I made it, but I tried to make this as concise as I could. But there is a lot to a lot to cover, I believe. I hope this helps. Again, um, I look forward to seeing you on Monday. I'll plan on doing actually a longer one. I'm probably going to just uh, kind of go through and how I would um, go through uh, chapter two um, to help you out there. The the first through page 78. I think it's going to end at 78. So I will see you on Monday. Thanks.